Friends, our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. Listen for the word of God. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, get up. Go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together again. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us and use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. And to that end, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm going to invite you to sing with me. You know it, I promise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy If you're anything like me, it's easy to go through the motions on a Sunday morning without fully absorbing the full meaning of all that we're saying and doing in worship together. Certainly there are moments when the strength of our words, the strength of a hymn or a confession, it will catch me off guard. The Spirit's still small voice will work its way into my heart. I will feel God's presence, God's pull in worship. But there are plenty of other times when I do what we always do or say what we always say without recognizing the depth of the truth that we are proclaiming. Our doxology, what we just sang, is one of those for me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Did you hear that? Did you really, did you listen to those words? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. From whom all blessings flow. Doxology literally means praise or glory. Praise given to God. Glory given to God. We sing doxology every time we gather for worship because this truth is worth proclaiming every time we are together. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. I'm going to try another one with you. You don't have to sing this time. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God, to worship you in every place where your glory abides. I imagine many of you had no idea how well you knew that until you were asked to do it without a script. 
You might recognize this from our prayer of great thanksgiving, which we pray every time we gather at the Lord's table. But do you know, you do know that prayer. Whether you knew it or not walking in here today, you know it. It has been a part of this church's story, a part of God's story, a part of your story too. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. These words of the great thanksgiving, as routine and simple as they might seem, they intend to characterize not just some kind of lofty Sunday morning worship service feeling, but every part of our Christian living. The mundane, the ordinary, the trivial, the everyday life we pray and confess together whenever we are at God's table, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give thanks and praise to God. So when we say it's truly right, on some level we're communicating it's part of our Christian duty as people of faith. It is right, it is our duty to give praise and thanksgiving to God. But then there's that next part. We also communicate that it is to be our greatest joy. Our greatest joy to offer praise and thanksgiving to God. So these very ordinary, perhaps going through the motion, parts of worship which we do so easily, they have so much depth. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. It is truly right. It is our greatest joy to worship you in every place where your glory abides. Our greatest joy. I wonder if we mean that when we pray it. Sometimes I think we prefer to go through the motions of these proclamations. We hesitate to let these profound theological claims dwell too deeply inside of us because at the end of the day, they require a lot of us. Too much, perhaps, it might seem. You see, I'm aware that in our very independent, self-made man, self-made woman, pull yourself up by your bootstrap society, I'm aware we're not particularly inclined to claim that we enjoy the thought of owing everything good and worthy in our life to someone else. Or that God is the one responsible for all the blessings that we know in this life. We prefer to see the gifts of this life as my money, my house, my children. I worked hard for this. Nobody gave me any handouts along the way. Everything I have in this life, I have done on my own. It is mine. I've earned it. And so while we may be inclined to see it as our duty once in a while to offer praise and thanksgiving to God, to consider it our greatest joy, to praise God from whom all blessings flow, well, that requires a little bit more of us, or perhaps really a little bit less, a relinquishing of control, a letting go, requires a confession that we are, in fact, not self-made, but quite the opposite. We are created. Everything we know in this life is a gift entrusted to our care. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Theologian Karl Barth was fond of saying that the basic human response to God is gratitude. Not fear and trembling, not guilt and dread, but thanksgiving. What else can we say to all that God gives us, said Bart, but to stammer in praise? It is truly right. It is our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God, to worship you in every place where your glory abides. To worship you in every place where your glory abides. Martin Luther, the great reformer, was once asked to describe the nature of true worship. In other words, what is it in life that demonstrates a perfect example of what our worship is, what it ought to be. And Luther didn't say anything about good preaching. He didn't say anything about the right hymns 
or even a well-rehearsed choir. I apologize. He didn't say anything about the sacraments or, or doxology. He didn't talk about the history of worship or its development throughout the years. He didn't, he didn't talk about any of this. Instead, he sat back in his chair, perhaps with a knowing grin on his face, and he said, the nature of true worship is the tenth leper turning back. The nature of true worship is the tenth leper turning back. In our story today, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem still. We've been there a while, but he is near Samaria this time. And on the way, Jesus and his disciples encounter these ten men with leprosy. As John Buchanan puts it, it is difficult to exaggerate the social alienation and isolation of these ten men. People lived in dread of leprosy. They lived in dread of it because anyone who was thought to have leprosy lived in total isolation, banished from their homes, from the loving touch of spouses, children, parents, banished from their faith community. Leprosy was so feared that even to cross the shadow of one who with leprosy was to risk infection. They lived alone, away from the community, and occasionally they banded together to become a small company of misery. And as the ten in our story prepared themselves for their usual ritual, crying out from afar for charity, one of them recognized Jesus. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, they cried. And Jesus did. Go and show yourselves to the priests, my friends. Because the priests in that time were the only ones who could certify that the leprosy was gone. The only ones who could make this claim on these lives and thus re renew them and restore them to the life of their community. And we don't know how long it took or how far they got down the road before this miracle descended upon them. But when it did, when God's kingdom broke into their isolated and broken world, cleansing them from their affliction, restoring them to their humanity, one of the ten, the Samaritan, no less, the Samaritan turned back. A foreigner, a religious outcast, a social outcast, he turned back, overcome by God's movement in his life, unable to remain silent in response to what God had done. There was nothing to be gained from this turning back, nothing that he owed anyone, but he had been healed. His life restored and he publicly, spontaneously and joyfully directed all of his thanksgiving to God. Ten, ten lepers had been healed. Gratitude was not a precondition for healing, but only one returned. And when he returned, he returned in thanksgiving, falling humbly at the feet of Jesus. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. It is truly right. It is my greatest joy to give you praise and thanksgiving, O oh God, to worship you in every place where your glory abides. Friends, this man, this, this foreigner, this outcast, the one that in any other circumstance we might least expect, is the one who reminds us all that the most fundamental, basic response to God, to all that God has done, is gratitude. Gratitude for the gift of life, for the restoration of life, gratitude for the world, gratitude for the dear people God has given us to enrich and grace our lives. Gratitude, thanksgiving, it poured out from him. This man did not turn around because of duty or obligation. He turned around because joyful gratitude was the only way, the only way to respond to all that Christ had done. And it was truly right and his greatest joy to give praise and thanksgiving to God. 
Friends, when we practice this joyful gratitude, when we truly let these words, these going through the motions, words of our worship wash over us, when we truly praise God from whom all blessings flow, when we acknowledge that it is both truly right and our greatest joy to give praise and thanksgiving to God, suddenly we enter into worship not simply to get something out of it, but we enter into true worship falling at the feet of our Lord in thanksgiving. When we practice gratitude, suddenly the giving of our time, our talent, our resources, it is transformed from reluctant or dutiful giving into the glad gratitude of joyful givers, eager to bless others and to thank God for all of God's gifts. Suddenly our excuse is, I don't have enough time, or I'll do it next year, or no one will notice if I don't give. When we practice gratitude, suddenly our excuses, even our excuses, are transformed into an enthusiasm. An enthusiasm that God is at work, and boy, I, I can't wait to see what God will do here next. When we practice gratitude, it's not simply we can, something we can simply will ourselves to do. We have to practice it. But when we practice gratitude, the mission of the church changes from ethical or moral duty to the work of grateful hands and grateful hearts. When we practice gratitude, no longer do we feel entitled to the things that we possess. No longer do we cling to them with every ounce of our being no longer do we think that the world owes us something for them, but we are able to dwell in the richness of God's beauty. Something deep within our souls compels us to turn around, to run, to joyfully fall at the feet of Jesus, worshiping him, thanking him again and again for all that he has done. When we practice gratitude, we worship God. Praising God from whom all blessings flow. In the coming week, you should be receiving an estimate of giving card in the mail from our church. And before you tune me out, stay with me just another moment, okay? I want to read to you what it says on this card in case you are flying through your mail and you don't notice at the top, it says a grateful response. And then it says, in gratitude for who God is and all that God has provided through the unique work of Morrisville Presbyterian Church, I estimate my giving for 2020 to be. In gratitude for who God is, and all that God has provided through the unique work of Morrisville Presbyterian Church. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Friends, I can't begin to tell you how many stories I have heard the past three years I've known you about the gift and blessing of life here at Morrisville Presbyterian Church. You have shared with me stories of God's faithfulness that you have only known in this place. You have shared with me stories of a community that has walked with you, suffered with you, cried with you when words could not touch the depth of your pain. You have told me stories of your children in this church. How you've known God's presence and God's peace in the music that they, they create, in the mission trips they go on, in the Sunday school teachers who have blessed their lives. You have told me time and time again of the community, the family that you know within this house of worship, and you have told me on countless occasions of the unstoppable, unyielding love of God that has pursued you and welcomed you into this home. There are many ways that you can express your gratitude to God. I pray that this will be one of them. 
because your grateful response here at MPC, it will directly impact the ways that we can participate in God's kingdom right here in Morrisville, Pennsylvania. It will directly impact the ways that we are able to share the beautiful and unstoppable love of Jesus Christ with one another and with the world. Friends, there's so much in our life to be grateful for. You could write your own thank you note. You could go home and write that. It could take you all day. I know it could. But so could our collective thank you note here in the life of our church. So much that we do here, so much that we know here, all of the blessings we know here are from God. And what a gift it is to be in fellowship and in family with one another in that way. I know you have so many opportunities to give generously of your resources for causes of all kinds. I invite you to consider the ways that you have known God's love and God's grace right here at Morrisville Presbyterian Church. I invite you to give generously because the work that we do here is powerful. You have told me stories about it again and again. And the work that we do here together, it shares God's love, God's peace, God's mercy, and God's justice near and far, further than you can imagine or fathom. For it is truly right. It is our greatest joy to worship you, O God, in every place where your glory abides. So as you worship here, every time you worship here, as you know community and welcome and family here, as you participate in the multitude of missions and ministries that embody God's love here in this place, when God's spirit catches you off guard, when you realize you're not just going through the motions, when something moves you and touches you deep within your soul so strongly, I hope you will make the decision to turn around. I hope that you will run joyfully to the feet of our Lord and worship him, thanking him for all that he has done. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son.